gets the worm. I want to say a small prayer. And my prayer is that God will remove me so that he could be heard. Uh, when I played sports, I was an All-American. And I was as good as I was because I practiced and learned fundamentals. I say it again. I practiced and I learned fundamentals. Now, when you hear people or preachers nowadays, they are trying to be so sophisticated. They're trying to be so verbally and, and, and visually sophisticated to where as though people can say, hey, he is so smart. He knows so much about God. Look how deep he is getting. We have forgotten about teaching fundamentals. And I ask a question, and the question is, and the question is, excuse me for the interruption, do you know who and what he is trying to steal from you? Do you know who and what he is trying to steal from you? I won't ask y'all to solve this puzzle. I will just tell you the answer. That he is the devil. And what he is trying to steal from you is your soul. Fundamentals. If you have a problem with women, he would use a woman. If you have a problem with men, he would use a man. If you have a problem with drugs, he will use drugs. If you have a problem with money, he would use money. And he will put all of those things inside a trap, waiting for you to think that you are getting something that you desire or a free meal like a pig does. The farmer or the hunter spreads corn rotten corn inside the trap the pig goes in thinking that he's getting some free meal and as he walks through the door and trip the wire he is trapped so when the devil throws these things inside of these worldly traps that he has the goal is to take your soul He wants all of humanity to dwell in hell with him for eternity. Because he blames us for him being in hell for eternity. What you say, okay, I need, I don't want to hear your opinion. I need some concrete evidence or proof from the Bible or the Quran or the Torah. Okay. I hear you. Well, let me give you something from all three. Excuse me for the interruption. The devil really must not want y'all to hear this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like I was saying, when you get down to the fundamentals of it. He was cast out of heaven because he would not bow down to Adam. Jealousy was the first sin ever done in any realm a spectrum, jealousy. The devil was jealous of Adam. 
And he was jealous of the fact that God told everyone in heaven, including him, to bow down before his creation. And before this, you have to understand, in, in human terms, fundamentals. The devil was God, right-hand man. He was in control of worship. So in his mind, I don't know if the devil can have a mind or if he thinks like us, but we can only go by what the knowledge and the wisdom that we have. So in his mind, for lack of better words, he got jealous. And because he got jealous, he did not bow. And he was punished by being thrown in hell for eternity. But you might say, why didn't he never try to brainwash or psych out an angel? Because in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah, it says they were, not he was. So there were angels who got kicked out of heaven along with the devil. <laughs> because if it just was him, it would have said he was. It says they were. And may God forgive me for adding it to it anyway. So when you look at it, there's no need for him to try to turn angels. He got all the angels he needs. He wants your soul. And he wants as many souls as he possibly can get knowing fundamentals. Now, knowing that he has no chance of winning, the cast has already been set. The word has already been spoken. He will lose. But he wants you to believe that if you join his side, Y'all have a fighting chance. When in the Quran, the Bible, the Torah, it says clearly in all three, he will lose. He knows he will lose. But his job is to convince you that y'all will have a fighting chance. These are things that I share because I see the calling out and the cries that people have for simple things. People want to know how to do simple things, but they can't because everybody's talking about all these sophisticated things and all these things that the holy or thou have, but people ain't on that level. So when you talk about the holy or thou, this, then, the third, the sinner gets lost. And that's who you're supposed to be preaching for, the sinner. He gets lost. Oh, man, I don't understand none of this. Get frustrated. Because we're not teaching fundamentals. The fundamental aspect is you want to know, like I said, the devil don't want y'all to hear this. It's just interruption after interruption. I, I said people want information that they can use. Why have we forgotten about the sinner? 
Because if the devil wants to steal souls, he's not going to steal souls from the holy earth thou. People who act like they never sinned ever in their life. They're never going to sin again while sinning. It is a sin to take God's names. What does that mean? That means any name that was reserved for God, you cannot take or act. Perfection is for God. To act or try to be perfect is to sin. In closing, because the interruptions are getting carried away, if you are a preacher or a teacher, I ask you right now, please, don't forget about the sinners. Simplify your message. Sometimes, not all the time. You can have a message for the holy of thou's, but sometimes simplify your message. As if you're talking to a child, because some of us are children in God. And some of us are children as far as knowing fundamentally how to be a Christian or Muslim or Jew. Just because someone is a grown man in the world does not mean that he is a grown man in God. Sometimes things have to be broken down to a layman level. Not saying that these people are laymans, but God is a complicated thing. Living right is a complicated thing to a sinner. So I urge you, please don't forget about the sinners. May everyone understand my voice. Be blessed for listening. I pray that you got something out of this message. Because that is my only goal for you to get something out of this message. I mean. <laughs>